morning, Amiche. Good morning, Rashid. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing this morning? Mm. Very well. We By bless grace. God. We thank God for His grace. Let me start with you, Nana. And Nana, like I said earlier, is the leader of the Concerned Residents Association at Adenta. Nana, you have lived with this situation for how long yourself? Um, I've lived in Adenta for the past 20 years. 20 years? Yes. So since before this road construction began, you were there? Yes. And I'm sure you were very satisfied when you saw that the road was being, was being done. Yeah, we were, we were satisfied. My father's house was actually pulled down to make way for that road. And you didn't complain much? I didn't complain much because we wanted a nice road. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so, so that's where we are. But for the past about five years, four to five years, since this project was almost done in 2014, there's been a challenge in Adenta with the absence of footbridges. As someone who lives in Adenta, um, how is it like for you? It's terrible. It's terrible. Um, the reason why... First of all, let me, let me state here that we are not a political group. We are not a political group. We are not doing politics. We are not interested in any political whatever. What we are concerned is about the community, the safety of our people, our friends, our family members. So let not anybody misconstrue the whole situation like somebody, people who are being supported by <clears throat> some political group, grouping or some people somewhere. No. So okay. that's it. Yes. So the situation is very terrible. In fact, it's alarming the rate at which cars knocking people down. And it is not about the pedestrians alone. Those of us who are driving are also at risk. So, so it's, it's everybody. You don't even need to live in Adenta. It's a highway that connects to Ebri. The Peduasi Lodge is there. The president uses the road very often. It connects to, to Kofodia, Kumasi, and other areas, Dodua, um, Akosombo, Pon. So it's not about those who live in the community. Just that those who are being knocked down are those who are living in the community. Or working there. Or working there. Those are the ones who are being knocked down. Let me come to you, Nyameche, for your thoughts on this. How long have you lived in Adenta? Um, personally, um, before I start this, I would like to say rest in peace, Okriku. Um, Okriku was our friend. He died on this road. I've been in Adanta for almost seven years now. Um, my views on... Yes, yes. Um, but just, just a moment. Who is Okriku? Um, Okriku was our buddy. A very yeah. good friend of ours that we had fun around, you know. Yes, yeah, so he was your neighbor. Yes, was, you a, was a neighbor. Actually, was a neighbor. And we saw him a day before he, died. he was knocked down by a car. When did he die? He died about three weeks ago. Three weeks ago? Yeah. He was knocked down? Yeah, yeah, we had a funeral about three weeks ago. He yeah. was knocked down about a month ago. Oh, okay, okay. And um, all because of this situation that we are talking about. Exactly, exactly. So you must have a very personal reason why you want to see these footbridges up. Of course. Imagine um, I have three kids, and guess what? I have to make financial provision to cross the road. Because whenever I have to cross the road, I'll pick a taxi from the other side to cross me over. Because I can't cross this road with my kids. Imagine having a two-year-old and a one-year-old and trying to cross this bridge without traffic lights, the no foot bridge. Just think about it. And school children are crossing this road every morning. Every morning. We have wads, we have tototin. It's, it's unbearable. So, personally, I have to make provisions to cross the road. Wow. That's, some would call it extreme. So, you, you take a taxi and the person goes to turn at the junction. And exactly. I, I pick a taxi at the Kinky House Junction and then turn, goes through the other side before I come back. Wow. And you do this every day, at least when you can. When I, whenever I have to cross the road, I will have to pay for it. Well, if you don't want to join the other 185 of people, course. That's, 
some may have to do that. I crossed the road myself when I was yeah. doing the, the reports and I know I understand what you're talking about. Even though at the time the intersection was very busy, the Marina Zongo Junction was very busy. And so the cars weren't moving as fast as, as we want. But um, I'm curious to hear a bit more about Okweku, but I'll, I'll come back to you on that. Rashid Osebon, who is assembly man for the area. Yeah. Rashid, what is being done? Yeah, first and foremost, we, we are most grateful for this opportunity and this platform. The highway was supposed to relieve us of certain uh, burdens. You know, pedestrian bridges are there to ferry people to safely cross over highways because you know highways are, uh, let's say, avenues for cars joining from major regions to have access to Accra. So most of the times you see these cars at a, part, uh, a, a specific speed crossing over the, 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 the road. But our major challenge was that every community that is close to a highway, you have people crossing for various services. Some go to buy food just at the other side because before that particular highway was not really a major road. It was a normal dual carriage road, normal one, that everybody could just cross. There was not so much attention on the road. But after that major construction, which to some of us, it was a blessing. Because if you live in a community and you get such a huge infrastructural project, you're happy. And also when we saw the footbridges also coming up, we were excited. Because it would make it easy for us to have access to our other side. Because like Nana said, we know of families that have houses across the road. You understand? So intermittently, you'd have to visit the other side of the road just to see a friend or do something. So initially, we were excited, as I just did say. But the challenges began when we realized that the project was at a halt. And that is where we started. This was in 2014. Yes, 2014. But as an assembly man, what has the assembly been telling you uh, as regards this project? Yes. Uh, as an assembly, our uh, Eber Roast engineer is supposed to update us as to what goes on with the contracts and the road. And we were told that it was something that the government was working on steadily, that it would go through. There was a timeline that I have forgotten now. If, if my memory, I recall it, I'll let you know. Did they give you a specific time, even though you don't remember the time now? Did they give you a specific time that we should expect the bridges to be complete? Honestly, we felt that at least within a year after major works had been done on the main road and the, the, the pedestrian bridge, the main uh, structure had been put in place. We felt that the arms, the stairs that lead up to the structure itself, and the ramps at well. least a year should be enough. By a year, it should be done. And this so was back in 2014. 2014. After 2014, 2015, we felt that ah, this thing is long overdue. It's taking too long. But we started having challenges. When our traffic lights and the street lights started experiencing some, as they say, technical glitches, that is where the issue started. Because people crossing will be knocked down because the lights are not on. And the cars are just spreading on. And pedestrians too sometimes, as you know, due to time constraints, we are not that patient enough. It results okay. in accidents. Um, let me come back to you, Nana, before I go for round for final words. Nana, have you engaged with leadership yourself? I mean, leadership, your members of parliament, your chief executives. What have they been telling you? Um, we've not been able to assess our leaders, members of parliament, both Adenta and Madina. Um, they've had, they've had this advocacy. They've not tried to make themselves available to us, even though we're in the community. I have not seen the MP, both MPs. Yeah, I, 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 I have not seen him. And, um, um, Boniface, Boniface, I have not seen him. So, um, we're trying our best. We started with this social media creating awareness and then we try to see if we can get somebody to talk to us but nobody is forthcoming so now we have written a petition mm -hmm. there's a petition that we've written to the minister of roads and highways mm -hmm. we will copy the 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 mce for adenta the mce for madina the parliamentary select committee on roads and highways the member of parliament for both adenta and madina and then the police commanders, both Madina and Adenta. So we have them ready. These are the petitions. We will submit them to, we will start sharing them today. 
Okay. And then we'll make sure they have it. And then we will see what they're going to do. Because our people are getting worried. See, let me let me let you understand the situation better. You see, in this our country where we live, most people come to work in Accra. So in the morning, all those on the other side of the road would have to cross to pick a car to town. In the evenings, you pick a car from town, you alight, you have to cross home. So, so it, 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 it is a major problem. If you are living in Adenta and you want to assess Medina market, our wives go to the market. My wife goes to market every day. She's a caterer. So I drop her at the market. She has to cross the road. So, so we, it's a major problem. It's a major problem. Definitely the, definitely. the the other problem we also see is that SDA junction. I don't know whether somebody is benefiting from the traffic light that is not working, because I, I can't understand. It has ne it has just refused to work. It doesn't work. And you see, from Adenta barrier to Reese Junction, it slopes. So when you are coming from the barrier and you are approaching um, uh, SDA Junction, because the road slopes, motorists speed, knowing very well that the traffic light is not working. It's not functioning at all. So the speed so there's over. no reason for them to stop. There's no reason for them to stop. So when the traffic light is red, it's green in a dental barrier, then all the speed is coming to SDA Junction. And that is the only okay. place you can cross to talk to teen school to the other side of the road because the middle region has been uh, has been blocked somehow. Yeah, there's a short wall. There's a short there's wall. A short wall. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. that is the only place you can cross. So everybody crosses from there. And the speed that the cars are coming with, if you are not patient enough, because you can stand there for about 30 right. minutes, you enter the road and you knock down. And that is where cars knock people down every time. The situation is indeed worrying and we'll take a copy of the petition and... Um, would also follow up at this end as well. It's a matter of concern for us here in the studio as well. And thank you very much for joining us, Nanam Puma. We would have to end this leg of the conversation here today. Nanam Puma, Nyamiche Dusafo, and Rashid Osei Bonsu. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, Nana is uh, Nana and Nyamiche are members of the Concerned Residents Association of Adenta. Rashid is Assemblyman for Adenta. They have with us um, petitions here for their authorities asking why the footbridges have not been constructed. You're still listening to the Super Morning Show. Enjoy 99.7 FM. Our friends from Zenith City are joining us shortly. We're going to talk about the Joy Habitat.